hello everyone welcome to my video on a 2019 programming and today's topic is dynamic delays in any kind of automation it's very important to make sure that our code doesn't run faster than the screen at any point of time the code should be always in sync with the application that is getting automated let me give you an example suppose the steps that I'm going to automate are these I go to this text box and I type run, press enter. In the run command window that comes, I press CALC for calculator and I press enter. On this window that pops up, the calculator window, I type 1 plus 3 equal to 4. Now, when I'm automating these steps, I have to be very careful that my code is not running ahead of the application. So when I say run and I press enter, I have to wait for this pop-up window to come before I start typing CALC calc. And when I type CALC calc and I press enter, I have to wait for this window to come before I can start putting in the numbers. That's what dynamic delays are all about. Some developers prefer to use static delays, but static delays are not reliable. In case of a production scenario, when you're automating applications like SAP and Oracle. <clears throat> due to the volume of the records, due to the uh, production performance delays, sometimes the application behaves unpredictably. In such cases, you always should use dynamic delays. Dynamic delays make our code robust and durable. Let's see how that works. Let me just start by bringing in a capture statement, recorder capture, double click. Okay. We are capturing the taskbar. Let's go with the capture. Now this doesn't come as a text box, it comes as a button. So I am going to go for a click. And then I'm going to Simulate keystrokes for run with the enter key from the on-screen on keyboard. Oops, sorry, okay. When I say keystrokes, I have to go with the application taskbar and run enter. That's the keystroke. I'll just put some more delay. It's always good to have few milliseconds of delay between each keystroke. Now, once I enter, I have to wait for the run window to come. So how to do that? So what I'll do here is I'll go for if condition. And I'll choose the condition. Window exists. Now, let me just bring up the run window and go for application, refresh and select run. So that's the window we are waiting for. How long would you like to wait for this condition to be true? So now that's a positive scenario. When I press run and enter, this window should come. Otherwise, my automation doesn't work. So for a positive scenario, it's always good to put as much delay as possible because it's dynamic. Even if I put a 100 second delay, if the window, window comes in 10 seconds, the code executes in 10 seconds. It doesn't have to wait for 100 seconds. So that's a dynamic delay. So we put as much delay as possible. Now, if this window comes, if this window exists, then the next thing we have to do is to capture the text box. So let me just take care of this window first. So if this window comes, let me just bring in an else condition. What happens if after 100 seconds this window is not present? It means some exception has happened. So the best thing to do here is throw an error message. saying run window not found or maybe not loaded and it will go as error it will throw error message okay so this is our if condition now if this condition is satisfied if the run window exists then we move on to the next statement so I don't have to put anything inside the if condition I'll just continue with my action so next condition that I'll check is once again if condition but in this case 
we are checking for an object. Let me go to recorder object. My application is still the run window and I'm capturing this text box. Okay, so this is a text box and if this text box exists, I wait for let's say 30 seconds. I don't have to actually wait for 30 seconds because if the window exists, then of course the text box also exists. But since it's a positive condition, it's always good to have some delay. And the entire delay is anyway dynamic. So the same thing over here. I'll just throw a message box saying text box not loaded. Now, if it has come after the seventh statement, if it has already crossed all the statements, it means that both the window exists and the text box exists. So what we can do here is we can directly go with a recorder capture. Go for the application run. Capture the object text box and go for a set text of run with a enter key from the on screen keyboard and put a 100 millisecond delay on each keystroke. So now we have entered run and we have pressed the enter key. Next thing we need to do is to wait for. Oh, did I make a mistake? It shouldn't be run enter because it's, we're already on the run screen. It should be CLC enter. Okay. So now when we press CLC and press enter, we need to wait for this window to come up. So once again, we need if condition. Our condition is window exists. And the application in this case is calculator. And let's say we give it 100 seconds to load. We bring in an else condition and we throw an error in case calculator window not loaded. Now, if this window is present, we can directly go for our number keystrokes sorry, uh, the number buttons. So I'll just start capturing. Application, refresh. Calculator. Let me just start by capturing one. Action is click. Once again, application, refresh, calculator, capture object, plus, action, click. Go for the number three in this case. So basically I'm just adding one and three and we'll do a click on the equal sign. And save it. Let's close everything and let's run the code.
so if you see there is a delay while the run window is loaded and there is a delay while the calculator window is loaded but even though the code executed fine there was nothing else on the calculator so no keys had been typed why did that happen so the moment the window loads this condition is satisfied and the code remainder of the code is executed but it happens so fast that even before the keys are loaded properly the code is executed so let's try to check the keys let's check for any one key because if this key is loaded then all the other keys are also loaded so let's just put if condition to check any one key let's close this again oh sorry i actually need that to capture the key so once again we put if condition right before the first record capture we put if condition and check for recorder object refresh the application list and select calculator go for a capture capture this key okay and we wait for let's say 30 seconds for this key to come and bring in else condition and throw a message if the key doesn't come in 30 seconds hmm button not loaded save it close our calculator okay so let's uh, run the code again start from run clicks on the taskbar types run opens the run window types calculator enter waits for the calculator window to open up and then types in the numbers so that's how we implement dynamic delays now the same concept is applicable both for windows applications and web applications equally uh, dynamic delays are a very important part of your coding and it's always a best practice to keep checking for the window or the menu item or the new drop down that is coming on uh, based on the selections that you have made the future videos we are going to talk about uh, more tips and tricks for A2019 programming. Hope this video is useful for you.